Hey you guys, welcome back to my channel. If you want to learn how I created this trending pin shirt, stay tuned. Okay, so I went to the store and bought a plain white beaded shirt. Um, I bought it from Target in the kid size and an extra large. And this is the only one they had, y'all. It was all beat up, ripped apart. But I didn't really care. I've been looking for this shirt for three days and it was sold out everywhere. So now I'm just lining all the shirts together and these are the tie-dye colors I'm using. I bought the orange and the blue one from Walmart and the other from Hobby Lobby. So now I'm just cutting them into the crop tops. I know I didn't want them too long so I just started to proceed to cut. So I finished cutting all three of my shirts and now I'm about to begin coloring them. Um, I purchased tie-dye rubber bands and they all came in different sizes. So for the first shirt, I wanted like a circular effect with the dye. So I started twisting the middle of the shirt and placed a rubber band to hold it. And I just continued the routine and made sure each section was tight and twisted well. Okay, so this is how it looks when it's done, and I'm about to start working on the second shirt. For this shirt, um, I just used the fork to place in the middle. Once it's in the middle, I started turning the fork, and the shirt began to follow it. Um, after using the fork, um, the shirt was twisted into the ball shape, and you want to make sure to keep it tight so it will be easy to apply the rubber band and stuff. So I'm just applying the rubber bands and making sure it doesn't get loose. So, for the last shirt, <laughs> I'm going to be honest, y'all, I literally just created a pattern in my head and just started to fold and pinch the shirt together. Um, I honestly can't explain what I did. I just did whatever and just went with it. Now these are all the shirts in different shapes and we're about to start coloring. So I started with the Walmart dye and it was easy to create the liquid dye. All I needed was water and a good shake. Okay so with this shirt I started with the blue first and began to pattern with the colors. Um, make sure you use a trash bag or one of those plastic grocery bags. This project was a little messy, but it wasn't too bad. Just, you know, you just gotta make sure you watch what you're doing and just be careful. Okay, so this is it, and I put it in a plastic bag to let it sit for a couple of hours. So now, y'all, right here, I'm just testing out the other dye. I realized right before coloring the other shirts, the pack of dye I bought from Hobby Lobby was spray tie-dye. <laughs> I honestly couldn't believe I bought the wrong kind. I wanted the liquid one, but that's what I get for not reading what the box say. So I just made it work and I began to spray each section with different colors. Um, with me buying the spray, I realized that the whole shirt won't be dyed as deep like the liquid would. So I just worked with what I had and I dealt with it. So this is how it looks when I'm done. And for the third shirt, I use the spray dye and the liquid dye together just to see how it will look with both of the products on one shirt. So I'm just spraying and pouring them both on the shirt. Also, y'all, um, I angled my camera wrong, so that's why it's all the way up there. So, excuse me, this won't be long, but yeah, y'all get the gifs. Okay, so I finished all the shirts, and I put each of them in separate bags and let them sit for about six to seven hours. After the hours, I rinsed them out and let them air dry, and this is how they came out. So, for the first shirt, I saw a picture on Instagram of a girl wearing the pins at the bottom. And I thought it was so cute, so I decided to recreate it. So, I'm just cutting the extra fabric at the top. And then, I 
went down to start cutting the triangle shapes at the end. I use a pen to trace it out first because I know me and I always end up cutting wrong or crooked. So, um, I just made sure, you know, I did it right. safety pins and I bought these from Walmart and I only paid two to three dollars for this many so I started to pin the shirt together at the bottom to you know create that same picture I saw okay so this is how it looks when I'm done and I put it on to show you guys and this is it I love it. I just wish I would have cut a little bit more of the triangle shape, but it's okay. Alright, so for the second shirt, I kind of freestyled with it. Um, it took me a while to decide, but I finally came up with something. And I wanted to cut both of the sides off um, of the shirt so I could put pins on them, line them up on the side of it. I finished added the pins on the side and I felt like it needed more so I cut a hole at the top of the tank and I put pins in that and I also cut a middle um, into like a V shape and put pins in those two final look of the shirt and this is how it looks on um this is one of my favorite shirts it's simple cute and i just like how it looks all together and the final shirt i did the most popular style of the safety pin and it was the wavy crossover style i don't know what it's called but i did that look so again i traced out how i wanted to be cut out and i began cutting it so with this look, um, I believe it's best to cut out a piece instead of just cutting it into the waving pattern. With me cutting off the extra fabric, it shows me it shows more skin and the actual gap in between the shirt. Now I'm just adding the pins to the shirt and I'm going all the way down until the end. Okay, and this is the final look and this is how it looks on. And yeah, you guys, this is it. This top was my favorite of them all. I love how the pins follow down into the wave pattern. And it was just cute all around. So these are all the three shirts. This was fun and easy to create. I know it's trending right now. And I just wanted to show you guys my recreation of it. But this is the end of the video. I hope you guys liked it. Please like, comment, and subscribe. And I'll see you in my next video. Bye.